Well, we are talking Zags this morning on Upper Left Sports. We are now uh, just over 72 hours away from the Zags tipping off. Uh, call it a Thanksgiving <clears throat> feast Thursday morning at 10.30 a.m. But, Steve, when the season ended last year, mm-hmm. I think we've all tried to block out uh, all of March in our memories. But if you go back through the archives, yep. to March of 2020, the AP final poll had Kansas number one, Gonzaga number two. And a lot of the bracketologists, uh, a lot of the college basketball analysts did think that there was a potential that this matchup could be, uh, you know, the college basketball championship. Yeah. And now we get it right away, first game of the season. Yeah, we really do. Of course, these teams both look uh, substantially different. However, this is a matchup that, you know, fans on both sides right now are just overly ecstatic for. You want to test your team against the best in the country. Bill Self, year in and year out, proves to be one of the best coaches in the country. He does not rebuild. He reloads. And uh, this is going to be a test for that this year. Uh, You know, this Kansas team is a team that lost its top two stars in Devin Dotson and Uduku Azubuke as well. So, uh, you know, they've got a very young and experienced team coming in. Gonzaga as well has uh, quite a few young faces. They're going to be a pivotal part of this season. So this is going to be a great early test, and I cannot wait for Thanksgiving morning. Yeah, those first two games, uh, Thanksgiving morning against Kansas, and then uh, Black Friday, mm-hmm. 8 a.m., I'll be doing all my shopping uh, on Fox, uh, watching them take on the Auburn Tigers. What I love is that Jalen Suggs, the Zags highly touted five-star freshman recruit guard, his first two games he actually plays fellow freshman five-star guards. And so I love that he gets a, a chance to uh, show what he's got those mm-hmm. first two games. Yeah, and, and we'll get through those games and worry about the rest later, but – you know, December 2nd, they play Tennessee. December 5th, they've got Baylor. Uh, they've got Iowa on December 19th. Mm-hmm. So this non-conference schedule is something we've never seen before. And I think it's going to yeah. be really interesting to see without those typical non-conference games. You know, I don't think every one of these teams, having not played any other competition, is, is going to be, you know, the sharpest game one. I think Mark Few will, will have these guys ready. I think you have mm-hmm. some leadership in guys like Corey Kispert. But you just have a feeling that in one of these first games, there's going to be a team that isn't quite ready for that national spotlight. Yeah, 100%. There, there's going to be some ranked teams this first week that, I don't know how else to say it, man. They're going to they're gonna get their butts kicked. I mean, it's just going to happen. You're going to see some very bad blowouts this weekend. When it comes to a setting like this where you don't really have the opportunity to warm up and play those exhibition games, this is oftentimes going to come down to coaching. You know, wh- which team can execute better. You know, they're going to be rusty. They're not going to be in perfect form. So if it comes down to executing, that's how you're going to win a game. And we're going to have a battle in between Bill Self and Mark Few. This is a coaching battle that any basketball fan looks forward to. And uh, these teams, man, uh, Kansas and Gonzaga, it really comes down to, I think this game is going to be who wins the front court. I think Gonzaga in this game is, is very well set up to win that front court battle. For Kansas, they've got David McCormick running center and a large drop-off behind him. So if McCormick gets himself into any sort of foul trouble or can't stay on the floor, we could see Gonzaga really put this thing away. Uh, you know, And it feels like Gonzaga could be, you know, whether it be Thursday, whether it be Friday, it feels like one of those two games could be uh, exactly what we're talking about where somebody's getting blown out. Yeah, high praise coming out of Kansas camp for McCormick. They've got a lot of talent, as they always do. A lot of five-star recruits, but Bill Self has not been shy about saying how far McCormick's game has come. No, uh, I think that'll be a huge test for Drew Timmy mm-hmm. uh, in this Gonzaga Bulldogs team. And let's not forget, too, you talked about the coaching battle. Bill Self uh, and Mark Few actually have coached together on Team USA. Uh, and so they have a little bit of history there. Uh, they are friends off the court, mm-hmm. two highly respected coaches uh, in the college basketball ranks. So we'll get Kansas Thanksgiving morning, uh, 1030 on Fox. And then don't go far. Uh, the next morning, 8 a.m., we're actually going to be shooting our show earlier that day so we can catch the game live versus Bruce Pearl's Auburn team. Now, this is an Auburn team that has put on a self-imposed postseason ban uh, for the season but let's not get it twisted this is a team that I think would be a tournament team uh, if that weren't the case 
Yeah, I mean, there's a very good chance of that. This is a team that is, I mean, we talk about Kansas being a little bit inexperienced. Auburn, they uh, they lost a lot last year. However, Bruce Pearl is a great coach. He brings in the ninth-ranked recruiting class in the nation. Really, when you're losing the six players, man, that's tough. Um, you know, and of course, you mentioned it, the self-imposed ban, that hurts as well. But this is a team that's going to be talented. Bruce Pearl's players always play hard, and they execute well. Uh, and they're led by five-star recruit Sharif Cooper. We mentioned it, obviously, Jalen Suggs didn't go right at, you know, two five-star guards. Cooper actually is a point guard, so it looks to be those two will be matched up. Uh, you know they're both aware of each other. Cooper, of course, being the 20th ranked recruit in ESPN's uh, recruiting class for last year, and Jalen Suggs being number six. So you know there's going to be some fire in that matchup. You look forward to it for sure. Uh, Auburn also has JT Thor, who's a four-star recruit, most likely uh, going to play a lot of minutes at power forward as well. So for Auburn, it comes down to how does this young team gel, and are they going to be prepared, again, back to not getting the normal warm-up to the season? Are they going to be ready for a team like Gonzaga, who's going to come in, be more likely to be executing well this early in the season. Well, in his 20-plus years uh, at the helm of the Bulldogs, it just seems like Mark Few and his coaching staff have really figured out a way to... This team always comes out early and is playing well. And what we see as GU fans a lot of times is they they trip up a little bit in WCC play. Mm -hmm. Uh, These teams know each other, but they found a way to have the team playing well early and late in the season... And even those those secret scrimmages against Michigan State and Baylor in years past, uh, we've always heard reports of GU coming out and really laying it down to some of these teams who haven't played anyone else yet. And so I wouldn't expect uh, Mark's few, Mark Few's team to come out flat, or uh, I think they'll be ready for this game. Yeah. But with this team, I mean, it's so interesting to have the conversation about this rotation the starting lineup, where are the minutes going to go? Mark Few traditionally only likes to go eight, nine deep. If we look at this team, yeah. they might be going 10, 11 deep. Not every game, but just look at this team really quick. I think we all expect Jalen Suggs to start uh, at the point guard position. Uh, you've got Joala Yai, uh, who everyone expects to start uh, at shooting guard, the junior. Corey Kispert, the preseason All-American uh, senior at small forward. Anton Watson uh, playing the power forward spot, sophomore out of Spokane, Washington, and Drew Timmy uh, at center, the sophomore. But after that, how many guys deep they go? I mean, in craziness in the kennel, Aaron Cook really looked like he was going to be the first guard off the bench. Yeah, uh, We know Dom, Dominic Harris is going to get his minutes at the guard spot. Omar Ballo is someone that we all expect uh, to play minutes down at the post. Strother still hurt. Uh, you know, Mark Few on the Mark Few show did say that he expects, you know, Julian to get healthy. And when he does, he's going to play. We don't know. Is he going to be healthy this week? Yeah. How late is that going to be? One. And then we've got Arlauskas and Zakharov that I think both will get minutes. We just don't know. And so is this a team that's going to go nine deep, 10 deep, 11 deep? I'm really interested to see how Few manages these minutes. Yeah, it's, you know, you got to go with history. And history tells me that Mark Few's never going to run 10 or 11 deep, even if he has the option. And this year is the test of that because he has an embarrassment of riches and just so many options across the board for how he can run with this team. So I still think by the end of the season, we see a probably eight man rotation preferred. Um, We're going to see, you know, a guy or two guys that fans are going to feel were left out of the lineup. And it's not going to be anything negative towards anybody. It's just going to be a matter of how deep this team is and how talented they are across the board. Uh, But you got to love it. You got to love having that problem. I know you and I talked about it. There's really nothing else we can ask for as a coach to be, you know, who do I who do I play out of my 11 capable guys? I'll tell you, in the world that's been sports in 2020, a lot of unknowns. It really does sound like the NCAA is going to find a way to make March Madness happen this year. It's all going to be at one site uh, up in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny what happens when money gets involved. You typically find a way to put things together, but we never know. I mean, injuries happen. You look at, you know, Watson's injury last year to his shoulder. Injuries happen. COVID happens. You know, having a team this deep, in this specific season may be one of the most, you know, biggest attributes a team can have going into 2020 season. 
Absolutely. I mean, if there's anything you could want, you want depth this year because we've seen it in not just sports. We've seen it in life this year. You just don't know what tomorrow holds for you. And so it is a great problem to have of all years to have this extra depth. Um, you know, early on, I think, of course, you're going to lean a little bit more on your starters. You're going to have to see who on that bench is ready to come in and contribute. Uh, because, again, you know, these aren't warm-up games. So this isn't something where we can put you in for eight minutes. And if it doesn't work, oh, well, okay, well, we'll pull you out. You know, you have to come in and perform right away, especially in these early games. These are some very talented teams that the Zags are going against. And, uh, you know, it's going to be it's gonna be great to see who comes out, especially on that bench, who prevails in that rotation to pick up some minutes. Yeah, when we decided to put this show together uh, a long time ago, you know, we we had no idea would we have Gonzaga basketball to talk about. Uh, our show wouldn't be what it is uh, without it, as the Zags definitely are our our number one topic on this show. Of course, but to be just a few days away from having Gonzaga basketball, man, mm-hmm. I, I don't know how I'm going to react on Thursday morning. But I can tell you... I'm not going to sleep. I know that much. I can tell you I'm going to be like a kid on Christmas morning unwrapping that present. I mean, I'm so excited to see Gonzaga basketball. Mm -hmm. But to arguably... This is arguably the most hyped team this program's ever had. I mean, the team that went to the NCAA championship, finished second to North Carolina, that team had a lot of hype going in. This feels like a whole different level. It really does. We've never felt this level of hype for Gonzaga it starts with when you bring in a recruiting class like you have, when you bring in the number six player in the nation, your highest recruit ever, it is inevitable. You're going to have just all that hype and the expectations around the program as well. But it's not just because of one player. It's it's because of you know who they return. You've got senior leader and a Corey Kisper, Aaron Cook. You bring back a, a breakout star, somebody who's on the Naismith watch list for player of the year, Andrew Timmy. And then you have the ability to run five guys off your bench. I mean, this is just something we haven't seen from Gonzaga. This is something that they've worked for for 20 years that it feels like it finally happened for them. This is, you know, just that pinnacle, that culmination of all this work they've put in. Uh, And I I tell you what, man, I think we're going to see Thanksgiving morning that uh, this hype, these expectations, there's good reason for them. Yeah, this is a a coaching staff and a team that has put together – uh, probably the, their hardest non-conference schedule in program history. And you just have to respect a team that will go play any team, any time, any place. And that's the Gonzaga Bulldogs. 